Hey everybody, welcome to It's Real with Jordan and Demi. Uh, we are back uh, after a couple week layoff. Glad to see you guys. We have a very special guest today. Uh, she's a critically acc acclaimed singer-songwriter from the great state of New Jersey. Her latest DP, Get Lost in the Music, is out now. She sings in English, she sings in Spanish. Please welcome Ambar Lucid. What is going on? was popping was popping <laughs> <laughs> we're just we're just chilling uh so you're you're back in jersey now right you lived in la for a while but you came back to jersey i moved to jersey after living in la for two years but i recently just moved to colorado what's in colorado any uh just the the thin air is good for vocals or something <laughs> Um, honestly, I just wanted to live somewhere different and I love the nature here. It's so beautiful. Um, there really isn't much for me here, but Do you ski or snowboard. I don't. She's the East coast girl. Yeah. Well, they have, they have snow, they have snow in, in the East coast. You go to Vermont, you know, to ski. Uh, so m maybe that'll be kind of inspiring you the nature, you know, you'll start writing about nature and stuff. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. I mean, I travel a lot, so it's definitely very nice to be able to like bounce back and forth from like LA, New York, and then have my downtime be in Colorado. Well, that's kind of one of the advantages that you, you know, you've gotten some notoriety over the last couple of years, you got some, your album and your last album, your EP did, did well. So you kind of have the freedom to go anywhere. People, you don't have to like be in a big city anymore. Yeah. There could be a cattail go behind your head. <laughs> yeah, my cat Snowy, she's super needy. So anytime I see, please. <laughs> you want to mm. see her? Yes. Cat cameo. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, she doesn't want to be on camera. Oh, there she is. There she is. Okay. Are you a person or are you a dog person? I, I am, honestly, I love both cat, cats and dogs. And now you're in Colorado. I'm assuming you're in a, a city or something. I, I or do you are, are in the out in the mountains where have you seen a timber wolf or a bear just out and about? I have not. I okay. well, maybe someday, maybe in the fall, maybe in the fall. Um, Ambar, you're you're I'm a big fan of yours. Um, you've got such good, you've got such a uh, diverse sound i i picture you you're the kind of person there's so many little guitar tones like this guitar sounds like it's from the 80s this guitar sounds like it's from the 70s you, you, do you how much you seem like one of those people that really cares about every sound every little tiny detail on your recordings are you one of these really nitpicky you know in the studio production people where you know you can't let a song go um i'm actually not when it comes to production like I trust the producers that I work with so much like we creatively just understand each other we're usually just like on the same wavelength when it comes to production but when it comes to my singing that is when I'm a perfectionist um like especially recently um it's been hard for me like it's hard for me to hear a take and be like okay this this is the one um I have to like re-record it like over and over again um just because even now I listen to a lot of my music in the past and my, my singing has improved. I started taking vocal lessons and now like I'm, it's very, very important to me how my voice sounds. Um, Cause usually like with the production, um, everything falls into place. Um, but yeah, I would say definitely when it comes to like my vocal takes, that's when I'm really picky. You have such a, a dive, um, a really, um, a voice that can go anywhere and do anything. I think sometimes, you know, you people compare you to Amy Winehouse, but I also hear some songs, um, you know, like the title track from your uh, from your your last EP. Uh, you kind of have like a Billie Holiday jazz kind of feel to some of your vocals, and I can hear some like '90s Gwen Stefani. So, um, do you have any? idols or people you looked up to in terms of who you matched your vocal style from? Yeah, um, Mon Laferte was, and still continues to be one of my biggest influencers when it came to singing. Um, I was also heavily influenced by like indie music and um, I think, yeah, like Sticky Fingers and Mac DeMarco, they heavily influenced my songwriting because I would listen to a lot of their music 
when I first started writing music and also Willow, um, I would say those have been like my one of or a few of my like biggest influences creatively. Let's talk about go ahead, Demi. Willow Smith, right? Are you talking about like female energy part one and two? Mm. Are you familiar with that? Yes, female energy and uh, I forgot what the other album was called. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll get we'll get we'll get uh, we'll get we'll get Hope the producer on that, and she'll she'll let us know what it. <laughs> um, speaking of Willow, it's funny you you bring up Willow because, um, you know uh, that that song she had out. Um, what what's this, something soul? Give it to me. Uh, Transparent Soul. Transparent Soul. Yes, the song that that song broke into the Billboard Hot 100 uh, several weeks ago, and it was really one of the first real rock songs with real guitars to be a top 40 hit in a while. Other than Maroon, I don't really count Maroon Five as a rock band. You know? <laughs> um, <laughs> that's not shade. That's true. They, I don't know. They, they probably wouldn't. You know, Adam doesn't need my doesn't need my support. They got enough money. They got enough fans. But. I do think that song, Transparent Soul, it is like a real, like a throwback early 2000s rock song. Um, so Demi and I have talked in the podcast a lot about the return of rock. How do you feel about the place that rock music is in right now? I think it's really cool. Um, I feel like we definitely live in a time now where, where people are more appreciative of different genres and I personally have been heavily influenced by rock music, like in general. Um, and I don't know, I think it's exciting. I, I, I think it's really cool, honestly. That do you feel, you're, you're only 20, 21, right? Yeah. So do you feel like you kind of missed out that you weren't even born when rock was kind of at its peak? You feel like you're kind of like, oh, I wish I would have been around then. Honestly, I I actually had a dream about this where I was talking about this. this is kind of trippy. I'm very thankful for the time period that I exist in right now because I can really make any style of music and people will appreciate it. And like I can make rock music, I can make pop music, I can make indie music, I can if I really wanted to, I can make country music. Um and I And just, you could. You you physically could. Like I I feel like your style could you could pump out a country song tomorrow if you wanted to. Yeah, um, I'm definitely jealous of like the whole like 60s, like 70s movement. Um, I wish I could have, I actually, part of me feels like, you know, maybe I had a lifetime that existed during that time period, but very thankful to be living in this time period mm -hmm. because um, existence is just easier as a creative and an artist. You were uh, completely independent before or independent ish before and now you're on a real record label you're on 300 uh what has that transition been like for you um i don't know i think it's it's been a very challenge for me just because i was very used to like the small team that i had and now i have a bigger team and it's been really nice to just you know have multiple people to go to and like check in with um it's definitely a challenge in the sense of like, I just have to deal with more opinions, but that's, that's just something that at, at the end of the day makes me stronger because, um, you know, it motivates me to really like stay true to what I want and like defend my art. Um, but overall it's been a really good experience. Honestly, it's, it's, it's taught me a lot already. I really want to get to the core of who you are as a person. Um, there is a documentary of you, um, online. That thing is crazy, by the way, the effort that was put into that. Yeah. I mean, your parents came here to live the American dream and here you are doing exactly that. How does that feel? And what message do you have for the world about immigration based on your personal experience? Um, I'm sorry. Can you repeat the question? Yeah. Basically you really lived out you're living the American dream and you've also lived through, you know, an immigration experience that was kind of heartbreaking. How do you feel about that? And what kind of message do you have for the world based, you know, about immigration based on your experience? Um, honestly, it feels really good to be able to, to have been able to make the best out of 
the opportunities that I was given, um, especially because, you know, my mom, she moved from DR to America to live a better life. And so did my dad. And I feel like, you know, I definitely did the best that I could with what I had. Um, and, you know, my message to people out there is is um, don't underestimate anyone. Doesn't matter where they come from. Um, if you have a passion and somebody tells you that you can't do it because you're this or you're from here, don't listen to that. Um, also, I, I feel like, you know, having dealt with what I dealt with in, in my upbringing, um, looking back on it now, like it's, it's just, it, it really inspires me. Uh, and I hope that inspires it inspires other people um, not to let certain obstacles in their life get in the way of following their dreams. Um, like, I, I didn't come from money. Um, my mom was always working and I truly just felt very passionate about music and I wanted to pursue it because of how much I've always loved it. And, you know, looking back on my entire life, it just, it shows me that perseverance is key. Um, doesn't matter what obstacles life throws at you in the way, uh, throws at you that gets in the way of whatever you're trying to pursue. As long as, you know, you really believe in something, um, anything is possible. Kind of going off of that, uh, Ambar, you, uh, your most popular song, A Letter to My Younger Self, is about around your, your father's deportation um, episode situation. I uh, don't know exactly how to put it. Uh, can you tell us the story behind that song, why you decided to write it and why you decided to do something so personal, you know, so early in your career? Yeah. So my childhood was really mm -hmm. depressing. Um, and I was not very hopeful. I was, I was honestly a really sad and shy and anxious kid and I had big dreams and I did not grow up in a supportive environment, like did not grow up with my dad. Um, I was around a lot of emotional abuse and music was always my outlet. Music was my escape. Music was my hope. Music was the light at the end of the tunnel for me always. And letter, was an expression of that was it was an expression of my sadness it was literally a cry for help at the time because i had such big dreams and and the reality that i existed in at the time was not very supportive of those dreams um and one day i was just like sad as hell in my basement grabbed my ukulele and intuitively just felt the need to write a song and I wrote letter and I express everything that I felt in that moment and, and I was just as I was writing the song I was reflecting on my life and I was like oh my god like I want to be an artist but nobody believes in me and like I don't like the life that I'm living I don't want to stay here I don't want to live in Jersey I want to get out of here I want to do big things and I felt like everybody around me had really low expectations for me except for myself like i was the only one that really like saw a big bright future for myself and and i wanted i wanted to keep that sense of hope the little bit of sense of hope that i had for myself i wanted to turn it into something bigger so i created a song and i didn't really expect much from the song but i just like somehow intuitively knew that you know i just had to do this and wrote the song put it up on SoundCloud and it just kind of formed a life of its own. Well, it's, it's, it's a great song and it's, it's, it was, and it's a good song that really introduces the the world to you. Like if you hadn't heard your music before and you heard this, you know, you could get a sense of kind of who you are. Um, your, your latest EP get lost in the music is I really like it. It's, what five or six tracks and it you really there's a lot of different styles different pacings there's you know i i really like that you can dance to some of this stuff um why where did this ep come from uh because you just released your critically acclaimed album last year so was this kind of an appetizer for something in the fall something more substantial a, a full album yes i'm definitely going to be releasing a full album after this project but um, There's the cover for a beautiful cover art, by the way. Thank you. 
Um, yeah, Get Lost in the Music was actually inspired by my creative rebirth after the pandemic, because during the pandemic, I really lost myself and, and was in a creative funk and, and was just really depressed. And, and I just felt lost for almost like two years um, up until I did a little bit of Magic Mushrooms and, and um, <laughs> almost as if like my creative spark i love for music was like recharged completely and the universe was like you love music if you feel lost try to find yourself through music and most of the songs that i wrote for a gal lost in music was me like rediscovering myself um and just enjoying music again instead of putting so much pressure on myself um and yeah i mean it, that EP is basically, it was basically my like self-discovery journey during the pandemic. That track, Get Lost in the Music, is super vibey, but I think what the fans really want to know is did you write the song on shrooms? I did not write the song on shrooms, no. Well, um, there's nothing that unleashes a little creativity than some light psychedelics to kind of get the <laughs> juices flowing. <laughs> it was inspired by a shroom trip, though. But I have a hard time whenever like I'm on shrooms, it's really difficult for me to focus on just like one task. Mm. Yeah, I, I would imagine so. I would imagine so. Um, you know, you you have this this retro sound, but then it's modern. Um, you, you've experienced, and I, I mentioned the the dance. You can dance a song like it does have not like a not like a techno not like an edm dance but like a more of like a soul dance like he this is a jukebox song this could have been on the jukebox in the in the in the 70s or something um you mentioned that you you have this trusted production team that you work with um when it comes to percussion bass and drums and that sort of thing what do you like uh, where do you draw your your preferences on that from i feel like i'm very in the moment uh, when it comes to like what kind of vibe I want to go for, what kind of sound I want to go for, you know, when it's me and the wavies like working together, sometimes it'll literally just be Jack with his guitar and he'll like play something and like me, Jack and Jordan will all be like, oh my God, like that sounds so cool. Like let's build on that. Or sometimes like for example, Get Lost in the Music, the song, um, that whole idea for the, like the sonically, it started out with, the um sample that starts at the beginning like jack played the song called pain uh by uh i forgot the artist's name but the song is called pain he played that and you know we all really liked it and we just decided to build on it um sometimes i j i play songs that i really like and and we use those songs as references and kind of like build um build sounds going back and forth from like the references i don't know it really depends on how we're feeling at the in the moment um and if i want to go for something specific you know sometimes um i like play some chords and we build from there I, jack plays something sometimes jordan comes up with something on his drum pad um there's really like no true creative process um we just kind of go with the flow usually you are, uh, you have some kind of, you are a Fender next class of 2021. There's some, you got some kind of Fender endorsement situation going on. Tell us about that. What's going on. Here's your, here's your chance to do a Fender advertisement. <laughs> um, I mean, I don't really have much to say. Um, what, well, what does that mean? That's what I want to know. What, what is that besides a free guitar? I'm assuming. <laughs> Honestly, I don't even know how to answer that. I guess the best way that I could answer is that they, support me as an artist it's good enough it's good enough <laughs> did you what was your first do you remember your first guitar was it a fender have you always played fenders um i prefer fender guitars but my first guitar was not a fender it was i don't even know what like brand it is but target <laughs> <laughs> it definitely was like some like cheap like beginner guitar from guitar center yeah I feel like cheap guitars are always red because it looks kind of rock and roll, you know, the, the like the red plastic. Yeah. Sorry, Demi, go ahead. What? Oh, I thought you were saying something. My bad. Um, so <laughs> I, 
you know, did you have a favorite guitarist or do you have guitarists that you, that you admire? Like my favorite guitar and fashion icon is Jimi Hendrix, honestly. Oh, nice. Nice. You go old school. Um, yeah, I, I would totally, I haven't heard it yet, but can you do like a, a Hendrix, like wailing guitar solo? How, how are you on that end? Um, I don't think I can do it. Can you play with your teeth? No, definitely. No. Oh, okay. Almost, Personal, almost one day. I, I was going to mention that I absolutely love your style, your personal style. And what other than music do you draw your inspiration from? Um, thank you. And TV shows, movies, Pose is one of like my biggest like fashion and suppose. Um, Somebody's got to make, I feel like you have a makeup mood board somewhere. Oh, I definitely make mood boards for like music videos and stuff. Um, I have like mood boards of like makeup and like outfits and stuff. Uh, I also go on Pinterest a lot to look up like makeup looks, uh, outfits. TikTok actually heavily influences my aesthetic because my For You page is just like, my For You page is either like tarot astrology or like, just people with people doing like fit checks. Are you, a, are you a, are you a crystal person? Do you have crystals? Do you do like crystals? <laughs> yeah. Wearing a few crystals right now. I have mm -hmm. Ruby and fluoride. Tell me about the concept behind these crystals. Cause I know it's like a new thing. Maybe it's not a new thing, but a lot of people are into crystals and they have them. And can you it's become mainstream recently, more recently? Yeah. What's up with that? Did, did the, each of them mean a different thing? Yes, each crystal is made up made up of like different compounds, and they um, they radiate their own like unique energy. Um, so they can spiritually heal us, physically heal us. Like for example, this one I wear every single day because it helps me focus. It helps me just have a clear mind. And then I also wear this one um, because it helps with my intuition, and it also psychically protects me um so each crystal has its like own unique quality and purpose it just depends on like what your intention is and what you're trying to heal or what what you're trying to do with the crystal but yeah um for the most part each of them have their own purpose and they look cool even if you know yeah, definitely get into crystals this is crazy i love it um i'm trying to think i think so I really started getting like deeper into my spiritual journey around last summer. And I was just, I would just read different s spirituality books. And a lot of them talk about crystals, um, especially like incorporating them to your like self care, like daily routine. And I just, um, just kind of got into them like through just reading about them and, and also watching TikTok videos. And I love going to metaphysical stores. And sometimes I just get drawn to crystals and I just buy them. I used to collect rocks when I was a kid. Not the same thing. I like, rock I, I, Jordan. Yeah. I, I, so dead ass, I went to a, it was an old train caboose. They turned into a rock and mineral store and they sold, they had like glass cases with all the rocks and yes. minerals and stuff. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Remember they had all of those different rocks? Yeah. In New York, I'll take you to the Museum of Natural History, Amber. I love the Museum of Natural History. I so 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 Amber, you're you're you just basically unlocked a mutual Demi and I didn't know we had a mutual admiration of rocks and minerals. So uh thank you, thank you for doing that for us. <laughs> I love that. We'll take you for for like a little school trip. Hell yeah. yeah. You mentioned you mentioned uh being on TikTok. Do you how much of a TikToker are you yourself? I wouldn't consider myself a TikTok because I, I I wouldn't consider myself a TikToker. I am very like lazy with TikTok. Like I genuinely just do whatever I want and record whatever I want. Like I don't try too hard. Like I will sometimes just like record something really stupid or like I'll do fit checks or I'll just like lip sync to songs. I don't know. I just, I honestly use it for fun. I just have fun with it. That's good. People that just do so like you know all of this this what do you call that <laughs> the transition zim you sound like you're 50 ah. years old 
know. What? what are these kids with their with their palm? No, I just I, I don't understand yeah. the concept. I'm like so. Have you have you? So I'm assuming you haven't done one of those videos where you flip the shoe up in the air and it falls and you're in a different outfit. You haven't done you haven't done that, have you? That's too hard. This is what, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that seems like a lot of effort, right? Yeah. 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 Well. You know, I'm 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 glad you've uh, you used TikTok as reference, not so much as uh, you know something. And I, I don't I don't seem like you don't seem like the kind of person that would like do like a, a sea shanty dance or something. Like you you don't seem yeah. I don't I don't picture that happening. But maybe maybe. Food, I will. <laughs> this is how many magic mushrooms are in your system. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, Demi kind of mentioned your aesthetics. You have s such amazing style. Do you have some kind of, st first of all, I, I didn't go deep into, I know your, your parents are, you know, uh, you have a Dominican parent and you have a Mexican parent and you, that kind of thing, but I don't know much about your siblings. Do you have siblings or? Yes, I have four younger siblings. I am the oldest. All of my siblings are children. Um, I have a brother and a sister from my mom's side. My brother's 12 and my sister is seven. I have little sisters. My dad. Uh, how old? They are. Little. Well, the reason I ask is that you know I was wondering if because people have when they have older siblings they pass down the style. You know, you kind of want to be like your big sister or something. But you're the leader. You're the one who sets the tone for the whole family. So do your siblings are like, yo, Ambar's got some dope outfits. We need to like dress like that. My little sister is more like that. Um, my little sister. Really, like inspired the like, makeup looks and outfits that I wear sometimes. I don't think my brother cares. Yeah, he's just a dude. He just like <laughs> is he into like sports and you know dude stuff or he's really into video games. Oh, okay. Well, that's yeah. That's that's about sounds about right. Everyone's that's brother. Nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Amber, we we do this like little rapid fire question game here on the show and we'd like to do a new jersey themed version of that so questions about new jersey Ooh, okay okay let's do it all right we've got a new jersey themed version of what you're dealing with ambar lucid all right so first question favorite food from jersey bagels bagels mm -hmm. do you think there's a difference between like new york bagels and jersey bagels I don't think no, there's... just New York <laughs> metro area bagels. Yeah. Okay. All right. Next question. Do, do, do. Favorite, the, wait, that's supposed to be last. So we're going to reverse that. We're not going to put that up yet. Is Springsteen overrated or underrated? <laughs> and this, In, you can disagree. Overrated. You know what? That's not an uncommon... Um, Uncommon. My so my roommate was planning. To, we went to, planning to go to that concert for New York. The I the the New York comeback concert in Central Park the other day with Springsteen headlined, and she was talking to. Her, she probably is like she's not in this. Not going to miss her name, but she was talking to her friend about. She's going to the catalog. She's like, this song's okay. That song's okay. I'm I'm a fan myself, uh, but I totally understand why some people think he's overrated. Do you have anything more? Do you have any any more? Uh, zingers for you want to throw you know tr talk shit about springsteen anymore while we while we have you no i'm good that's all i have to say about <laughs> i i swear it wasn't a trap well it was kind of a trap but you know we'll, we'll move on we'll move on okay next question which of your beach in jersey Ooh, i don't know i actually don't know the names of the beaches in jersey i just go that's fair oh, uh, yeah. wait what no. So it's like oh, really I, dirty beach in New York City, but I, I'm not sure if you've been there. I like I like I like Coney Island. Are you do you like that kind of boardwalk vibe? Do you like the the cotton candy and all that kind of stuff? You know, definitely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Next question: to, to do best place to get away in Jersey, like uh, like you said, you were into nature. Do you have in like cool area to go camping or you know vacation, theme parks? You know, like what's your getaway? My getaway, honestly, my getaway would, is usually like New York or upstate New York. So not Jersey. So your getaway in New Jersey is to get out of Jersey. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's, that's fair. All right. Next one. Uh, what's the worst thing about Jersey? Being there. 
Oh no. man, uh, brutal, brutal, <laughs> brutal. Well, we got one more to redeem yourself here, Ambar. Uh, what's the best thing about Jersey? Being close to New York City. Yes. Oh. <laughs> all right, all right. Thank you for playing. What's your deal? Good answer. This is pretty good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so <laughs> you, sorry, <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. You know what though? I was in Jersey City a few days ago. Jersey City's all right. I like Jersey City. I like Jersey it's, City. It's got a vibe to it. It's got a vibe to it. And it feels, I like how Jer Jer Jersey City feels kind of, um, it feels like a smaller version of New York, which is kind of what it is, but it also kind of feels like you're stepping back in time a little bit. There's something kind of old school about Jersey City, which I like. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I did not, I'd never spent too much time in Jersey City and up until right before I was about to move. And I was like, wait, I kind of like this. And I was like, damn, like I just, I discovered that I like Jersey City as I'm about to leave. And I tell you one thing too, the path train is great. The path train gets you to New York City very quickly, very efficiently. You can use your, you can use your Metro car to get on. It's great. It's, it's almost great. Like Brooklyn, just the other side. Yeah. It's literally the other side. And that's what I, I do find irritating about Jersey. People pretend like it's like Pennsylvania or something like it's, if you're in Midtown, it takes you equal amount of time to get to Jersey City as it does to get to Brooklyn. You know, let's call it like it is. Okay, that's enough about Jersey and the PATH train. That's That that concludes the Jersey section of our program. All right, Ambar, what, do you have any any shows or uh, single releases coming up that you'd want to shout out? Yes, I have two headline shows coming up in New York in September. Let's go. New York in September. All right. Um, is that a, like a, is that a big show? Are you opening for somebody big? Like That's any details on that? I'm headlining. Um, oh, headlining. You like to that. Like I'm not opening for anyone. I'm, I'm headlining for myself. <laughs> yes. Um, cool. So that's, and you don't have a date on that just sometime in September or. I have the dates. I just don't remember them. Okay. That's fair. That's fair. We will um, we will put those up in the IG stories. We'll we'll put up uh, the real dates when you when you can September nineteenth. Okay, that's that's your New York show. It's September nineteenth, New York, not Jersey. But I'm sure you will play Jersey sometime soon as well. All right, Ambar, thanks you so much for joining us on Real Jordan Demi. Uh, best of luck with uh, upcoming shows and releases, and enjoy the the wilds of Colorado. Thank you so much. Nice meeting you guys. Bye. All right, we'll see you later. That was Ambar Lucid. You can uh, follow her on Instagram and stream her music. Great, uh, really fun to talk to and um, a really good musician and songwriter. And I know that that's something that hosts like to say all the time. And um, But I really, I'm really excited to see, you know, because Ambar Ambar's only 20 years old now. So it's really going to be fun to see what she does for the next, you know, five, 10 years. And Demi uh, is uh, we 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 be back after Labor Day. Uh, what what reverse? We have got Chelsea Collins tomorrow. We're not done yet with this week. We got Chelsea Collins tomorrow at two two o'clock Eastern, and um, then after that we will go into our little like Labor Day break. But until tomorrow, we will see you later. You can check us out on. Um, you know, iHeartRadio and uh, Spotify. You can anywhere you can stream podcasts, you can find us. And of course, clips on Facebook, YouTube. Uh, and uh, we do have a TikTok, which we will be working on. We promise. All right. So until tomorrow, we will see you later. Have a good day, everybody.